Hi, Seahawk fans. Uh, this is Ali Pierce, uh, Ali Pierce Scuba. Uh, this is just an opportunity for me to share with you some of the uh, items and the things I have in my Sea Hunt collection, considered the largest uh, Sea Hunt memorabilia collection in the world. And I think it's pretty neat. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I've been passionate about Sea Hunt since it first came out in 1958, the first year I tried scuba diving, in fact. And uh, I have a lot of neat stuff. Uh, from uh, the TV series Sea Hunt, one of the most famous TV series that was ever shown. And uh, I loved showing these things to you and talking about them. And what I'm trying to do here, what I, what my, my, my goal is simply to get you enthusiastic about scuba diving and about Sea Hunt. And I know for a fact from the feedback I've gotten from a lot of you uh, that uh, a lot of you are interested in Sea Hunt, first of all. And I've actually been able, I've actually in, in encouraged some of you to start a Sea Hunt collection. I've had some phone calls from a couple of guys who have comic books and things like that. And they're asking me questions. And I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I do not want Sea Hunt to ever be forgotten. I don't think it will be. And I want to do my part to be sure that other people feel the passion for Sea Hunt that I did when I was a boy, and I still do. In any event, today we're going to talk about the Sea Hunt board games. Now, right off the bat, we have a, a minor problem. If there's anybody under the age of 30 watching, and I'm sure there is, I may first of all have to explain what a board game is. You see, this is the age of the Xbox. And, uh, and board games, however, from the 50s right through until maybe the 80s, board game, uh, before that actually, but board games, that was family entertainment. That replaced everything. Remember, the, in, in the 50s and 60s, few people had TVs. And even into the uh, early 70s, uh, when color, color TV became common, there weren't that many channels, and you certainly didn't have, as I do now, a thousand TV channels, of which uh, three have something useful on them. But anyway, uh, they didn't have any of that. And there were no computers. And then I remember the Commodore came out with board game and Pong. You remember Pong, the game? Bing, Pong, Bing. That was fantastic. But all through that time, board games were the rage. You can still buy board games, uh, and a lot of them are still very popular. Clue and, uh, and many other ones uh, like that. Sorry, remember a game called Sorry. But anyway, families would sit around in the evening after supper. They would sit down, mom and dad and the three or four kids would sit down. They'd play a board game. And it was exciting. It was a lot of fun. There was a lot of socializing. There was there was some uh, there was some moral education in there. As things happened, maybe there'd be a squabble, but a, and so on. And, and the parents would work with the kids and had a great time. It was just a wonderful, wonderful time to be alive. And board games at that time were a big, big part of it. Sea Hunt had board games as well. That's right. Well, because Sea Hunt came out in the 50s and 60s, and board games were very popular, and because the TV studios and other various companies, uh, game manufacturers and publishing companies, all wanted to capitalize on the uh, popularity of Sea Hunt uh, that they produced board games. I want to show you a couple of those. Uh, in fact, there were a lot of games that were made uh, for Sea Hunt. I've got a couple here. Uh, you, you can see here that they're actually puzzles. I just, I'm just going to show these to you quickly because we're going to talk about these later. But these are actually jigsaw puzzles. You remember jigsaw puzzles? Again, uh, from the time of board games, or you would buy a jigsaw puzzle like this. You see Mike Nelson and Sea Hunt from the TV show. And over 240 pieces. Wow. <laughs> and there's this picture, you see, of Sea Hunt who has just rescued someone. And there's the famous uh, boat, the, uh, the Argonaut and a friend of his, and, and old scuba tanks, and so on. And then when you open up this box, and these were cheap, these were like a buck and a half or two bucks, you open up the box, and there'd be a plastic bag with all the pieces in it. You remember jigsaw puzzles? I'm sure some of you do you remember jigsaw puzzles. And you would sit down uh, in the evening after supper again, and you would sit down, and you put the jigsaw puzzle together, and eventually all those bits and pieces, you would end up with a large picture that looks just like this. And this particular uh, uh, manufacturer made this one, actually made two for Sea Hunt. Uh, the Timely Rescue, this one was called. And then Mike Nelson and Sea Hunt, this is called The Dangerous Treasure Hunt, which I have back here as well. well we're going to talk more about those uh, jigsaw puzzles. There were three jigsaw puzzles that were brought out uh, for Sea Hunt. There are the three of them. We're going to talk some more about that uh, in another uh, of my Sea Hunt episodes. And I'll share some ideas ideas about that and where you can get them and what was exciting about them. And there were coloring books as well because these games and so on were designed for kids. So there were coloring books. You can see here a coloring book from Mike. I'm not sure if this copy of mine has any color in it. Oh, did I see one there with some color in it? That looked like somebody had... Yep, yeah, there. You see there? So some young person, possibly back in the 50s or 60s, maybe 50 years ago, 
they had crayons. Remember crayons? Yeah, they still have crayons, I know. And he started to color this. He's got the color of the tank right and the color of the hose is correct. Not too sure about the weights there, but anyway, he started to color this. And this was actually a story. So, it, oh, there's another. So if you went from start to finish, every page, it actually told a story. It was one of the Sea Hunt episodes with Mike Nelson. Sea Hunt coloring book. Uh, made in the USA. There it is. And I have a, I actually have a, an unused cover from that. But I don't want to dwell on the peculiarities, the, the, the neat stuff about the coloring book. I want to talk today about board games. And there were two board games made for Sea Hunt or made in response to the Sea Hunt show. There were two of them. Let me show you this one, this first one, uh, which is simply called Sea Hunt. And this particular board game made by a company, Merit, and based, as it says, based on the exciting TV adventure series with Mike Nelson. And there you can see a, 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 a typical um, Sea Hunt age scuba diver down there with, with a U.S. divers, old U.S. divers, and having this knife, had to have a knife. And there's a shipwreck and another diver and all that. Not very exciting uh, front on this board game. And then, and this was an exciting, entertaining game for two to four players. So you see four people would sit down and invariably on the inside of the cover on these old board games, uh, you, if you, you older folks remember this, would be the instructions, the rules, you know, here's how you play the game and here's what you can do, here's what you can't do. And this particular board game certainly looks exciting. The actual board itself is part of the box. You don't lift the board out, which is very common, but this is a typical. Now look at that. Isn't that colorful? And you can see on here, once again, we have the shipwreck and the fish looks like it's upside down, and an octopus, and a treasure chest, and Mike Nelson's boat up at the surface there, you see. And essentially, as you can see, this is a, a game where you spin the spinner, and when you I'm going to take that out. Kevin, does that show up, or is that plastic bag make it hard to see? And I'll slip that spinner out of there. You spin the spinner, you see, and like so, and when it, whatever it lands on, oh, number three, whatever it lands on, you get to move a certain number of spaces. And you can be penalized, or you can get extra spaces. That's the way board games work. People went along, and each person <clears throat> had their own little skin diver. Huh? Your own little Mike Nelson. Here's Mike Nelson. <laughs> so he would start off. He's the green one. You start off, and you spin the spinner, and that would move him up to here, and you keep on. And the first person to get back to the boat was the winner of the game. It may sound a little bit hokey, but you know what? You get mom and dad and two or three kids playing these games. It could be a lot of fun. There'd be a lot of laughs, a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, like crying sometimes because you were falling behind. And then the other three members would sort of look at each other and wink, and, and they they wouldn't be quite so aggressive, so the younger one could catch up. And these were a lot of fun. An awful lot of families had an awful lot of fun with these board games. And there is one from Mike Nelson from the Sea Hunt TV series. I want to put that aside, and I want to look at another Sea uh, Hunt board game, the other Sea Hunt board game. To the best of my knowledge, anyway, there only are two Sea Hunt games. The Merit game that I've just shared with you is, is not very common. It shows up occasionally in, uh, in game uh, auction sites and occasionally in Sea Hunt auction sites as well. Not terribly, terribly uh, uh, common. Uh, this one, however, is fairly common. This was made in the United States, uh, um, and, and um, it, it was a little more common, made by a company called Lowell, Lowell Toy Manufacturing Company, and they were based in New York. And this particular picture, I'm not sure if you can get a close-up of this picture, uh, Kevin, but this particular picture is, is very, very exciting. I need to tip it down a bit, do I? But you see it's Sea Hunt, uh, underwater adventure game. And there, of course, is uh, Lloyd Bridges and one of his iconic Iconic uh, photographs or uh, images of Lloyd Bridges as Mike Nelson, and of course a typical Mike Nelson episode with a gigantic shark, and uh, Mike and another diver down there uh, trying to fend off the shark as they do their work underwater. Typically, pretty exciting. And you imagine for a, a young person in the fifties uh, or sixties walking through a store and uh, seeing this, he, oh, mom, look, see how was Mike, my hero. <clears throat> I know exactly how that sounded because that was probably me. <laughs> but anyway, you could buy this board game and uh, have a lot of fun with this. Now, this board game was a little more involved. Uh, again, uh, you open up and uh, there's the instructions. Instructions for playing Sea Hunt for three or four, two, three or four players. And, and uh, there's examples and how you play, how you get points, how you get ahead. And this was a more typical board game in that it had a board. That's right. You reach inside and you would take out the board. You know what I'm so there is the Sea Hunt game. There's the actual board. Now, I'm going to bore you with all the details, but you will notice, as is common with many, many board games of the time, 
Now, this particular board has squares around the outside, almost reminiscent of Monopoly. Do you remember what Monopoly is? Yeah, Monopoly is still around. It's, I don't know if people still play it, but anyway, it boards around the other side. And then on the board itself, there are many, many squares, and there are different depths, six fathoms and 12 fathoms, and mics are right in the middle, and there's boats and, and, and little islands and so on like this. So once you uh, had, the, uh, had the instructions that pretty much figured out and knew how to play, well, then you would sit down with the board in front of you, and there'd be four players, and each of the players would have their own man, as you like, and, and, and the men were just little little plastic uh, markers that you could sit on the board, <clears throat> like so, and move it around on the board. And then the, the, the actual mechanism itself was similar to that previous game. There was a spinner. So when it became your turn, and there were rules for deciding who started, you see, so if you were number one, you were starting to go, okay, let's see, two. And then based on what that meant and the rules, and there's money in here. You see these little rings? I have them all. Some are missing, but they've just been punched out. You see, they, they fall out. Or cardboard, punched cardboard. So you had your, your gold bars in there, and you would move your man in your gold bars. And then, <clears throat> and just to make it a little more interesting, they had a set of cards as well. So if you had this card, <clears throat> you could pick up some compressed air, yeah, which is probably handy if you're a scuba diver. And, 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 you know, so you could pick up these little extra things, pick up some compressed air. And uh, that would help a little bit. And so that would give you some extra incentive so you can get ahead in the game. And even on this uh, game board, this is not the actual board itself, but even on here, look at the colorful uh, uh, pictures. Now, there is another picture of uh, Mike Nelson with his famous uh, B4 mask on his forehead, white B4 mask, and the same pictures on the front. A couple of divers here. It looks like they found some treasure in a shipwreck. Another diver over here has found an anchor. And, of course, you notice that they have spear guns. Always had to have spear guns. Oh, yeah, yeah, have to have spear guns. And, uh, so they, and this was just a great game. So I can imagine I didn't have one of these uh, when I was a young boy. I didn't have one of these board games. But I'm, if I had had one, I think I would have had it worn out by now. This game is almost perfect, almost in mint condition. All the pieces are there. The board's in good shape and everything else. But it took me a long time to get one like this. I had to buy a lot of Sea Hunt games in order to finally get one that was complete and, and the board and the box all in good condition. So that is uh, the two board games from my collection. However, as you know, I'm a little bit, I have what I call a passion. My dear wife calls it a sickness. So I can't, I, I'm not quite satisfied just to have the board game. I have to follow up a little bit. So I was able over time to find the Sea Hunt board game, the Sea Hunt board game right here, and in a catalog. So this was a catalog, you see, that was put out <clears throat> by various manufacturers, all kinds of games in here. And this catalog was put out at, guess what, Christmas time, of course, at uh, Christmas time. So this is a toy preview pre, that would be vu, but anyway, preview of games, like a Christmas catalog. You know, when we were kids, we went through the Christmas catalog to choose our favorite toy. Lots of toys in here, boys and girls, younger and older and so on. And then normally on here, and I have a couple like that, normally here there'd be a, a store name. It could be a Woolworths or Macy's or, or, or St Stanley's, whatever the name of the toy store was in your community. And you would flip through this catalog, and you would find, oh, there's a fire engine and a tow truck. You'd find the game that you wanted. Exciting stuff. And these were expensive, dollar, dollar $1.49, dollar $1.50, and so on. Well, guess what? Guess what's over here on page 16? Yes, there it is. There is that Sea Hunt board game. So some lucky boy or girl would be going through here, and maybe they're passionate about scuba diving as well, and they would go through the catalog, and they go running to the kitchen. I can imagine myself doing the running to the Mom, 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 look, there's a Sea Hunt board game. And the Chris, I just want, Mom, that's all I want. I, no, I don't want a bicycle. I want the Sea Hunt board. I can just imagine what it would be like. So there you go. There's a catalog, uh, a toy catalog from Christmas uh, with that Sea Hunt board game. Again, a little more additions, uh, provenance is sometimes what this is called, to reinforce the, uh, the image of the Sea Hunt board game. This is a different flyer entirely. I don't know where I got this. In fact, I don't know where I get most of this stuff. I'm just always looking, looking for various uh, items like this. And you can see here that this is also a sheet of paper. And this sheet of paper was actually put out by the Lowell Toy Manufacturing Corporation. 
Now, this sheet of paper was sent out to the various stores, probably to the buyers, the purchasers for the stores. And as it says, as the sheet says, two outstanding TV favorites. Basically, this is an ad saying, hey, you toy buyers buying for the retail stores, these are two new exciting games that you ought to have. So you should give Lowell Toy Manufacturing Company a call and give them a dollar and ninety-eight cents, and you can probably sell that game for three dollars and make good money on it. See, hunt, there's that same game. So this is a manufacturer's advertising flyer sent out for that Sea Hunt game. And here's another one. <clears throat> this is kind of interesting. Again, this one is sent out from uh, from uh, Lowell Games again, Lowell Manufacturing, and on this particular, this is a two-page flyer. On this particular flyer, I don't know if I can tip that down, Kevin, but on this particular flyer, you can see that NBC and ABC TV networks, look, Lowell Games are really, really good. They're on those networks, so you know that these are good games. You ought to buy these games, and, uh, and, and they have different ranges, and they're over on this side. is kind of interesting. There's a stack of the games. There's a whole bunch of the different games they have over here. Three Stooges and, uh, and uh, 77 Sunset Strip. <laughs> oh, boy, that brings back some memories. Huh? Batter Up. Uh, scoop and so on and uh, right smack dab in the middle uh, Where do I see it? Where, where, where is it? Oh, I can't see it now Oh, maybe it's on the other side. No, uh, it's right here. I know it's in there. I know it's in there Sea hunt the sea hunt game the one that we're looking at right now is in there somewhere I still have a spot. Oh, it is right here at the bottom sea hunt. There it is right there the Sea Hunt game is in that stack of games being advertised by Lowell Games as a good game to get because it's a big, big, big thing on TV. The kids will love that game. So you make sure you get one to sell at Christmas time. So all that's kind of neat. And all these little bits and pieces add to the, uh, to the mystique and uh, to the uh, authenticity of the Sea Hunt board games. Demonstrate how popular the TV show was. Demonstrate how popular Sea Hunt and Mike Nelson and all of that was. If you had Sea Hunt, on a game in the 50s and 60s, that game would sell. Just that simple. In fact, sometimes they put Sea Hunt on the game and it wasn't overly related to the show or to Mike Nelson, and it sold anyway. <clears throat> anyway, one more thing. One more thing I want to show you, and again, this, uh, if I may be a little bit immodest, points to the uh, completion, to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the depth of my Sea uh, uh, Hunt collection. I'm pretty proud of it. And, uh, and that's why I'm sharing it with you folks. Gets you excited as well. This is a, this is a, a portfolio, a collection, if you like, of pictures from a gentleman by the name of Wallace Wood. Now, Wallace Wood was a, a quite a well-known uh, uh, artist back then. And, and people would call Wallace Wood if they wanted the particular picture made for something. It might be for TV. It might be for a coloring book. It might be for an actual novel. It might be for a game. Son of a gun. So I happened to come across this, and in this book, as I was going through this book, I spotted something I found was pretty interesting. This is Wallace Wood. Now, Wallace Wood was in New York, 170 West 74th Street. I'm sure he's not there anymore. Long time ago. And there's all kinds of pictures in here. You see cartoon pictures and, and, and various pictures like that for comic books and so on. And guess what I found? Can you see that picture there, Kevin? That is, just to remind you, that picture. Yes, Wallace Wood was the artist, the illustrator if you like, who was hired to make the front cover for the Sea Hunt game. And there is an original, genuine Wallace Wood portfolio. But he would send out the various companies saying, hey, this is some of the work I've done. You should hire me to illustrate your next book or a board game or whatever it happens to be. And one of the pictures that he has in his portfolio promoting his own work is that Sea Hunt game. So there you go. I think uh, that's uh, that's uh, pretty neat. I, I like that. You've got the game, perfect condition. I got the Christmas catalog that sold it to the kids. I've got the manufacturer's sheets that were sent out to sell it to the stores. And there I have just, I don't know how I found this, but it's pretty exciting to me. I found the actual artist, illustrator, who actually made the front cover for Sea Hunt. So there you go. The Sea Hunt board games. 
and uh, how they are, what they mean to me, and how exciting they can be. In terms of value, I've mentioned that I would share some of the ideas on values on these board games. I see these board games occasionally on different auction sites uh, all over the world, and occasionally I see them advertised for anywhere between $50 and $150, uh, depending on the condition. I think that one in near perfect condition, hard to find, very hard to find, one in perfect condition with good corners. Remember, this was a kid's game from the 60s, all right? But you'll find one in really, really good condition, not beat up, with all the bits and pieces and everything else. Well, gosh, if you had one like this, I, I wouldn't think that $200, $150 to $200 would be too much to expect to pay for a board game like this. Anyway. Sea Hunt Board Games from Alec Pierce. Sea Hunt Remembered. I hope you enjoyed that. I want to say one last thing before we go. I want to explain the shirt. Kevin picked the shirt. He said we need more color. Whatever. So if you're wondering why I'm wearing this Hawaiian shirt, it's Kevin's favorite. In any event, Alec Pierce, Sea Hunt Remembered. Talk to you again soon. Hope you enjoyed that.